Hi, my name is Maya Balakrishnan. Today, I want to share some tips on sustaining your improvement gains. A big thank you to Karen Fugate for allowing me to adapt a previous presentation that she made on this topic. There's a great IHI white paper. It's titled Sustaining Improvement, and it serves as a basis of this presentation. Sustaining your improvement gains, it's so important because you've spent an enormous amount of effort and resources on your quality improvement project. And experience tells us that despite this, when we turn our attention to other projects or other priorities, many of our improvement gains will backslide. We wanna help your teams understand how you can support the systems and the processes that you've put in place so that they're sustained over time. A big key in this is to focus on hardwiring those tasks that have been standardized amongst your frontline workers. Standardizing tasks helps to make work predictable, efficient, and effective. It decreases that unintended variation that we in quality improvement are trying to minimize. We wanna help set people up to succeed. We want to make sure that your staff knows what's expected, what to do and how to do it. An important question to ask of yourselves is if this new way of doing things, the new processes and the new systems that stemmed from your quality improvement initiative, have they been incorporated into standards, your guidelines and your policies? Is there clarity on what people are expected to do, their roles and their responsibilities, so that you can ensure that the process works as intended? Are you making it easy for people to do the right thing? Do they have access to the necessary visual aids? Things like a daily checklist, a huddle agenda, or a huddle board. They make it easy for people to do the right thing. And what happens when new people join your team? How do they get oriented to your standard work? It's not enough to just have standards. You also have to hold people accountable to those standards. Periodically reviewing compliance helps us to figure out if more training is needed if the process has changed or if the process isn't working. How do you plan to monitor whether people are performing to the level of the agreed upon standards? Is there a way to ensure that gaps in performance are identified and addressed? For example, do you have resources for a unit manager to audit staff adherence to standard daily work so that corrective actions can be taken, additional help can be provided, or coaching can be given to help people work as you intended them to? And how do you communicate that compliance? Is there an item that gets discussed in a daily huddle or a monthly unit meeting about this? You know that in quality improvement, we are striving for continuous improvement and accountability helps to keep us on track. Another important facet of sustainability is visual management. Know the why behind your project and use your data to make it obvious for stakeholders. Connect the dots for them. One way of doing this is by using a visual management board. Convert data into information in an easy to understand way. That helps stakeholders know how data is important and why. It can bring clarity on how projects align with unit level or organizational goals. So what are those vital few metrics that are important for you to share? Be purposeful about what you share and how often you share this, how often this data gets updated and know who is going to provide those updates. Strategically place your visual management board in an area that gets well trafficked by your stakeholders. For us, we use a visual management board to facilitate our shift huddles in the NICU. Other ways of communicating data could be in emails or by the use of, of bulletin boards. Just as important as having easy access to data is having current data about a process. That helps data to be actionable. We see a problem in compliance, we fix it before it becomes too widespread. Building these critical thinking skills, problem solving capabilities and confidence, as well as engaging your staff is really essential because every project hiccup really doesn't need to become a new project unto itself. Start thinking about building capability within your stakeholders so that when there are issues that surface, your people can solve them or they can seek assistance when they can't. Consider who your experts are and how you will prepare them to be effective. Consider the resources that are needed to help your staff and your experts to succeed. Sometimes problems are too big or need redesign. Sometimes new research has been published or the system changes. 
Not all problems can be solved by the frontline staff or even by unit managers. Some will require management support or coordination between departments. Some require a lot of time to investigate or address. So consider what the process of escalating concerns looks like for you. How will you follow up on concerns that get voiced or communicate resolution with your staff? We congratulate you for focusing on your quality improvement initiative and getting to a place where sustainability plans can be considered. We encourage you to be deliberate about those aspects of your project that become standard work. Have an accountability plan, be transparent, and develop a visual management strategy. Promote problem-solving skills amongst your frontline staff and have a plan regarding escalation of concerns. Thank you for helping FPQC achieve our vision that all of Florida's mothers and infants will have the best health outcomes possible through receiving high quality, evidence-based perinatal care. Thank you.